Hey Magic One, welcome to your weekly tarot reading. I hope you're having a great week so far. Very soon I will be posting the 2022 yearly overview readings for each zodiac sign. I know I've been saying that for a couple of weeks, but I've had such a crazy start to the year. It's been really busy and it really does take so much time to do this. So I hope that you, you hang in with me there and I'll get them to you very soon. If you wanted to get your own personalized tarot wheel that will show you the available energies for you for each month of the year that you can align your inspired action to. I am running a special on that reading through my website. You can use the code YOUR22 to get 22% off that at the moment. Uh, you'll find the link to my website down there and also to the other types of uh, personal readings and healings that I do offer. Uh, you can also join the initiation at any time. That's my immersive blue tarot journey. If you're thinking about learning to read the cards for yourself, maybe your family, your friends, you can get immediate access to all of the online learning modules and videos and bits and pieces uh, when you sign up and you get lifetime access so you can take as long as you want to get it done as well. So that is about it from me. I just wanted to pop in and say hi and wish you a week of love and magic. Let's head across to your, to your tarot reading now. Gemini, welcome to your tarot reading for January 24th to the 30th. Let's see what may be on the cards for you. I have the nine card block, which happens to be a 10 card this week because we had an extra one jump out. I've got three for the recent past, three current focus energy and four near future outcome, couple of oracles and a lead tarot energy. You have some really, really big energies here, Gemini. We've got death, the tower, the devil, but we also have the sun and the nine and ten of cups. There's this opportunity to turn a really fundamental corner this week. It's a real paradigm shift here, but of course, unless we take that inspired action, things ultimately remain the same. I always say that manifestation plus inspired action equals aligned change. So it's like you have this real, um, you know, condition, there's a conditions are just right this week to kind of change frequencies here from maybe a lower vibration or something that's been holding you back into an elevated frequency or energy. The first oracle out was unbound, releasing soul patterns, contracts and past lives. So what this can mean is that there might be um, a, a soul contract partnership or situation that you are needing to move forward from this week, Gemini. And we generally know when it's time to move forward. Like it can look like you know, we, we've been in the situation for a while, there's been fundamental challenges, maybe a lesson to learn, and we've had some good times there, but then things turn the corner and maybe become toxic or, um, you know, it becomes a struggle, it becomes hard, or we lose our joy in that situation. That is really an, an indicator that we need to bring in change. Sometimes we've moved on physically from a situation, a relationship, a job, um, but we're in the energy of maybe grieving it, um, wondering what if, and really if we're still very much um, thinking about it, we are connected to that situation and it can occupy the energetic space that somebody or something new would come in to fill. So it's saying that we need to release it to really open up that energetic field for yourself again, Gemini. I've played these as well, and you may or may not be um, clued into the, the starseed concept, Gemini, but so it goes that some of us here have had other incarnations um, on other planets, other galaxies, and we've come here to be a part of this big shift that is going on at the moment, okay? It was a soul contract to come here and help, you know, Earth and the collective humanity ascend from the shadow side into the 5D reality. Maybe you are one of those people, maybe you are a light worker, and it doesn't mean, Gemini, that you have to become a tarot reader or, you know, a work for a charity or, or anything like that. It's really about holding that frequency of love. Um, maintaining a high vibration, 
But if we find ourselves in toxic situations or around lower vibration situations, then we're not living that part of our truth. That part of your soul contract is not being fulfilled. So the cards are really saying, elevate yourself, Gemini. Allow to leave from your life whatever is not serving you. And there is a big, a big energy of that here this week. Lead Tarot Energy Gemini is the devil. It is a Capricorn energy. It may mean that you are dealing with a Capricorn. But it can also mean that you are dealing with something that has really held you back or held you bound. And the energy of release is here this week. So for example, it could be a relationship that's just, you know, you've outgrown it. And that is absolutely fine. Um, you know, the... The, the measure of success of a relationship is not how long it lasts, okay? It's really, you know, did you have that beautiful time together? Did you learn what you needed to learn? And then did you know when it was time to move on? We can say exactly the same about our employment. Um, it often follows the same kind of pattern, okay? We go into employment or a relationship. We have the honeymoon stage. Oh, this is great. You know, I'm learning something new, new challenges. And then we kind of settle in and... We enjoy, you know, the rhythm of it. And then at some stage, you know, those rose-tinted glasses come off. Or maybe we've we've learned everything that we need to. We're feeling less fulfilled. And then it comes a time. Is it time to plant new seeds there? Or is it time to release and move on? With the devil energy, there could be something that has, you know, gone bad in a situation. You might be dealing with someone with an agenda. Um, it can be money issues. It can be addictions. Or it could just be that you're needing to release a contract or something that you have, you know, held on to that is not serving you. It can also be your own fears and limitations arising within yourself, Gemini. Let's jump into the tarot. I have got, in the recent past, the sun, the death card, the Knight of Swords, Gemini, this is your minor arcana. And what I'm really seeing here is you stepping into your power through taking the journey of death, which is the energy of clearing the slate and releasing from your life what has had um, its season, what has had its full potential of growth, its full potential of learning lessons. And we surrender to allowing it to leave so that we can grow a different crop in the future. Okay, it's a bit metaphoric, but you know what I mean. Um, um, that's the energy of death. It's really like to, you know, to get to the energy of, you know, the the healing, the the rebalancing, the new, the new dawn, the new day. We need to release. And in the right away uh, version of this card, guys, we see the the very small sun energy that is rising on the horizon. And we have the sun card here. Now, you know, what this is really saying is that should you allow whatever it is for you to release, then you are going to enter into a, a much more positive ch chapter. One where you have swift forward movement, okay, Knight of Swords, um, and you come more into your natural state of power. With the Knight of Swords here, there could be a communication that you are needing to initiate, Gemini. I always believe that we are you know, the we are the ultimate alchemist of our own reality, meaning we need to take the action. We can't expect change if we don't. Sometimes if we don't in initiate change, the universe brings in the tower, which we do have in this reading. And I often say that the universe will tickle you with a feather for so long, meaning it will send you the signs that, hey, it's time to move on. You know, you've outgrown this. It's nothing bad in, in acknowledging that, but it just is time to move on to the new. And if we ignore that for a certain amount of time and don't take action, it brings in those Mack trucks, you know, and, and plows it out of the way. And, and that is the tower that is in your energy field. But first of all, you have the opportunity, Gemini, to step up here and say, you know what, I've outgrown this job, this relationship, you know, I, I, it's been beautiful. Can we just celebrate that? But I'm needing to move on to the new. And that is the obstacle that you are needing to overcome come here with the with the the death card and the sun card i should acknowledge guys i forgot to mention i'm using the morgan greer this week which is completely different i've never used anything else apart from the right away for the key tarot cards in my whole three years here um, i was recommended this from one of my beautiful tarot students so here we go we are we've got something different going on today beautiful imagery okay current or focus energy page of cups nine of cups ten of cups 
guys, this is beautiful energy here. So I think what this is saying is that behind this situation is an unexpected shift towards happiness, one where you can be a lot more content and satisfied also because Gemini, the Nine of Cups is satisfaction that comes because you have worked for it, you have taken the action and you know that you're moving with universal timing and you're not, you know, wasting time in a situation that you've outgrown, but you are moving with that energetic flow. Now the Ten of Cups here, it is a 10, so it can also be another indicator of ending, um, but also it's the higher realities of happiness. But we know that there is inevitable ending energy here in order to get to that. Page of Cups can be a new messenger of opportunity entering your life. So there could be that, you know, as soon as we have this conversation, you know, the words that we speak are, are the spells we cast. So as soon as we initiate an ending, it's, it's like the universe just opens up the floodgates. New opportunities can enter, new people can come into your life, Gemini. And that's what I'm feeling with this shift here. It's like a night and day situation of the energy. So Page of Cups can be a person, um, a messenger of opportunity, an emotional messenger, uh, it could be that you're, you're needing to look for a, a new home or a new place or a new job or something like that that makes you happy with the cup's energy and it just comes out of the blue, you know, like a sliding door reality situation. As soon as you end one situation, another one opens. It just happens to be perfect and lined up for you is what I'm feeling. So this is the week that if you if you can go through that, that there is a real um, a real shift, a real quantum leap to happiness. What we need to keep in mind, Gemini, is that often when, you know, when we are faced with, you know, endings and needing to initiate them, needing to have that hard conversation, that this old energy of the Four of Pentacles rears its head. And for me, this is the... This is the devil energy in this spread as well. It's the energy of fear and it's the energy of wanting to hold on because it's the known. So even though it might be a toxic situation, it might be really uncomfortable for you. You are perceiving that, you know, stepping into the unknown and, you know, leaving the situation is more uncomfortable but the thing is with the devil energy is that it's not sustainable because over time it is wearing you down. It is, um, you know, taking that sense of life force and creativity and energy from you. So, yes, there will be some scary moments when you're stepping into the new or releasing this job relationship, whatever it is for you. But we have to trust that we are, you know, moving in the right direction because if you stay where you are, Gemini, you know you will get more of the same. Is that good enough for you, I ask? So four of pentacles, we need to leave behind this comfort zone. We need to release we perceive that we have a sense of security and stability in this, but it's a false reality because what you also have in that is a sense of I'm bound to this and I can't achieve the higher levels of happiness and satisfaction. The Ace of Swords here is this clarity, this insight that is going to come to you. And I feel that might be the, the clarity that we've just talked about. It's like, okay, well, if I rip off the Band-Aid and step into the new, yes, it's going to be scary, but it's not as bad as staying where I am. That can be the clarity, some kind of inspiration. This could mean that you, you know, step up into your power and you have that communication and you bring down the tower. That's what I'm feeling now. You know, it's like if we don't do anything, the universe will bring in the tower and remove this from you in time. However, you know, if we should step up and, and initiate ourselves, we can bring down the tower and clear the space for the new. So the, the Ace of Swords says that's how you get your victory and that's how you crown yourself in this king energy, whether you're male or female. This is about being in your, in your power in your authoritarian energy, directing your life from that place. The tower here is the symbol of pulling down what is not in alignment for you to make space for what is. It says that what you're moving away from is actually built on an unsteady foundation. So, you know, if we patch it up or rebuild it, that foundation is still going to be unstable, right? It's still not quite right. 
So if we do that, we'll generally just go around for another cycle and end up back at the tower. The universe says it is time to, to release that. Yes, with the Five of Cups, you will mourn the loss, and that is absolutely natural. We can mourn the losses of, of what has left our life, but what we want to do is not stay in the grief for too long, otherwise we will then block the new opportunities to happiness that can come through. So... The tower is an act of grace from the universe if it comes without you initiating it because it is there to to move you towards that nine and ten of cups uh, energy. Just notice the sun is also at the bottom of this deck, guys. Let's get one more to finish off. It is the eight of cups. Now we've got the eight the 9 and the 10. So how do we get to the 9 and the 10 of Cups? We acknowledge that we need to move on because we have a fundamental piece missing in the situation. The 8 of Cups is an awakening to the fact that we can't complete the picture. We can't be, ever be completely fulfilled in this situation because there might be a, a value missing. We might be dealing with somebody who just doesn't want to make positive changes. And it's outside of our control that, right? It's never going to be the nine or ten of cups. So the person in the eight of cups realizes that they actually need to physically and energetically remove themselves from a situation to go after the ninth cup, the cup of wish fulfillment, which ultimately leads to the ten, that high vibrational reality that you are supposed to be living in this lifetime because that is part of your soul agreement. Gemini, I'm going to leave it there and I hope you enjoyed this channel tarot message. Keeping in mind it is a general reading for the collective and it may or may not resonate for you. Feel free to drop me a comment if you're called to share. I read them all and try and interact with you all over there. Helps me get to know you guys and connect with your energy. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, it really helps to support the channel and um, there's a good energy exchange between us as is when you like, share and comment on the video. Gemini, it's been a pleasure to read your cards. I will see you back here for another one next week. Bye for now.